Azimax is a botanical insecticide, miticide, and nematicide. The active ingredient is azadiractin. And in this specimen label, it is 1.2% by weight with other ingredients of 98.8% by weight for a total of 100%, containing 0.35 grams of azadiractin per fluid ounce. Keep out of reach of children. The signal word is caution. If you don't understand what a signal word is, please refer to my video regarding warning, caution, and danger, the importance of signal words. Read entire label, used strictly in accordance with precautionary statements and directions, and with applicable state and federal regulations. Before I go too much further, I'd like to reiterate that this label may or may not be relevant to you, depending on what country you live, what province or state that you live, and uh, what year it is. And what I mean by that is, in the future, regulations can change. Uh, government regulations for different countries are not the same, and research is not always accepted the same in different contexts. So, for example, the people who made Azimax may find that the um, long list of uh, plants that it can be used on and pests it can be used on is even longer and they might want to reprint that label so that they can show that that is what it's for and I think that is important to consider that that this video is being made in 2017 and an additional label in 2020, 2025, who knows may, uh, may reflect uh, increased um, problems, perhaps it is more dangerous, and maybe the uh, signal word will change, or maybe the amount of pests and plants that it can be used on will change, either increased or decreased or what have you. So just be aware of that before I go into this signal, um, sorry, this label, and that's all I had to say. So moving forward we have that the net contents of this particular uh, specimen label was for um, it's one pint 16 fluid ounces and here we have uh, some of the people associated with it obviously it is OMRI listed that's a very common um, it's very commonly uh, associated with organic farming as a direct in is alright so environmental hazards this pesticide is toxic to fish and aquatic invertebrates for terrestrial uses do not apply directly to water or to areas where surface water is present or to intertidal areas below the mean high water mark do not contaminate water when cleaning equipment or disposing of equipment waste I'm sorry wash water or rinse it it is a violation of federal law to use this product in a manner inconsistent with its labeling uh, don't huff it don't uh, don't shoot it up intravenously. <laughs> don't get high on it. Don't don't do anything that you are you know that you're not supposed to do with it. Use it as is intended. I think that's pretty obvious. Um, read the entire label, and if you're listening to this video, please read the label, even though you listen to this video. Please do. Also, make sure you find a label that is relevant to where you live. Use strictly in accordance with precautionary statements and regulations and with applicable state and federal regulations. I just want to reiterate that. Um, do not apply this product in a way that will contact workers or other persons, either directly or through drift. If you want a good example of how drift can be incredibly deleterious and economically and ecologically damaging, check out my video on dicamba and the dicamba incident that happened this past summer. Uh, only protected handlers may be in the area during application for any requirements specific to your state or tribe. Consult the agency responsible for pesticide regulation. Easy. I'm going to go down here to the mode of action. Uh, as a max controls target pests on contact or by ingestion, the product acts as pests. I'm sorry. The product acts on pests in in a way of repellents, antifeedants and interference with the molting process. Azadiractin 
an insect growth regulator, mimics the pest's hormones and disrupts distinct stages of growth and development of insects and mites. The primary mode of azadirectin is an interference with synthesis and metabolism of ectazone and the juvenile hormone. Ectazone is the molting hormone of insects, and azadiractin can regulate growth leading to death before or during molting. I really couldn't put it much better than that. Um, but yeah, that's a great way to put it. Ectazone is uh, important for the molting process of insects, and this product can disrupt that. So larvae never become adults and that's really important for integrated pest management um, combined with something that might kill adults and this which will kill larvae trying to pupate you may be able to keep a population from reproducing in your crop and uh, you know that's kind of the reason why this is a good tool in the toolbox there is a long like I referenced before list of um, ornamentals and landscape plantings I'm not going to go over all of them. Uh, there's a precautionary statement. Hazards to humans and domestic animals. Caution. Harmful if absorbed through skin or if inhaled. Avoid breathing vapor. Causes moderate eye irritation. Prolonged or frequently repeated skin contact may cause allergic reactions in some individuals. That's true. Some people do get sensitized to certain pesticides and other compounds. Um, especially things that are easy that are easy to um, uh, uh, sort of evaporate or are very small particulate matter. Um, be cautious about that. Some people are just more sensitive than others. Avoid contact with skin, eyes, or clothing. Wash thoroughly with soap and water after handling and before eating, drinking, chewing gum, or using tobacco, or any other kinds of products. Remove and wash contaminated clothing before reuse. Further on, we have the continued ornamentals and landscape plantings. I'm going to go past that, but I will note that the waxy bloom on certain ornamental plants will be reduced after an Azimax application. Applications of Azimax will remove the glaucous blue coloring from evergreens such as Colorado Blue Spruce and Coster Spruce. Pest controlled or suppressed, so there's a huge and long list, and I'm just going to go over the insects that I think are most important with an explanation of what these names mean. Target pest species of Azimax include Hemipterin and Homopterans. Now, Homoptera is actually an invalid taxonomic uh, rank, so this must be somewhat old. Uh, as far as labels are going, or they just weren't corrected, which I'm surprised about, so maybe this is just kind of an old label, but Hemipterans and Homopterans, including true bugs, like box elder bugs, chinch bugs, ligus bugs, and stink bugs, lace bugs, leaf hoppers, um, mealy bugs, including the citrus mealy bug, which is a pretty big pest, white flies, including greenhouse, silver leaf, sweet potato and woolly white flies, aphids including the apple, green peach, melon, pea, potato, and rose aphids, psyllids including the pear psyllids, and scales including black scale, brown soft scale, California red scale, which I'm pretty, pretty, uh, I'm, I've had to deal with that quite a bit, pretty familiar, coffee scale, Olive scale, San Jose scale, and cottony cushion scale, which is pretty uh, pretty common, at least where I live. Lepidopterans, that would be uh, butterflies and moths. So that would be the European shoot moth, pine tip moth, and tussock moths. There are also leaf rollers, uh, including citrus leaf miners, grape leaf roller, and the omnivorous leaf roller. Cutworms, like the citrus cutworm. Caterpillars and loopers, including cabbage looper, kinker worm, case bearers, case worms, corn ear worm, diamondback moth, which is a big one, fruit worms, grape leaf skeletonizer, gypsy moth, horn worms, imported cabbage worm, navel orange worm, soybean looper, spruce bud worm, tent caterpillar, tip moths, tent caterpillars, tobacco bud worm, tobacco horn worm, tomato pin worm, tussock moth, army worms, including 
Beet Army Worm, Fall Army Worm, Lawn Army Worm, South Army Worm, and Yellow Striped Army Worm, and Web Worms and Leaf Perforators. That's a long list. Um, more, <laughs> more from that. Coleoptera, that would be the beetles, as it is in bold. Beetles and grubs and weevils. The Asian longhorn beetle, the Colorado potato beetle, the European chafer, flea beetles, Japanese beetle, June beetle, leaf beetle, Mexican beef be bean beetle, southern mass chafer, twig girders, dipterins, that would be flies, uh, crane fly, cherry maggot, hessian fly, oriental and mediterranean fruit fly, marsh crane fly, melon fly, and leaf miners including the citrus and serpentine leaf miners. And it's even continued on the next column. All right, Thysanopterans, thrips, citrus thrips, flower thrips, gladiolus thrips, onion thrips, western flower thrips, and for some reason they put thrips palmy, I guess because they didn't want to use the common name for some reason. Acarina, so that's mites, red spider mites, brown spider mites, or sorry, brown mites, clover mites, conifer spider mite, European red mite, and uh, two-spotted spider mite, so Tetranicus urticae, which I have a bunch of videos on, Orthroptera, including crickets, grasshoppers, and locusts, nematoda, nematodes, but only for suppression, it says, and hymenopterans, which are uh, bees, wasps, and ants, and sawflies, including European sawfly, pear sawfly, and yellow-headed pin sawflies. I didn't mention everything, but I did mention the ones that um, I thought were important. There's a long list, and that list may grow over time, so please check your label. Spray prepara preparation, as a max is an emulsifiable concentrate to be diluted with water. This product forms an emulsion and will separate upon extended or prolonged standing, re-agitate to assure uniformity of the spray mixture. Prepare only the volume needed for the intended application and use the spray mixture within 24 hours of preparation. That's uh, important. I've definitely come into contact with people who have uh, tried to pre, uh, pre-mix and then like kind of keep it as like a, as like you would maybe like create like a, like a cold brew coffee and just like keep it in your refrigerator. Like you can't just, you can't do that. <laughs> it's not going to be as efficacious for sure. Azimax, emulsifiable concentrate and is compatible with commonly used pesticides and fertilizers. Uh, always check the physical compatibility using a jar test in the correct proportions if needed. This is for tanks mixtures. If a broader spectrum of control is required, tank mix Azimax with insecticides or miticides. If a rapid knockdown of heavy populations is necessary, then include an effective contact insecticide miticide in combination with Azimax. Always read and follow the directions for use, precautions, and limitations for use on all product labels used in combination. Applications must follow the precautions and limitations of the most restrictive product label in the mixture. Do not exceed the dosage rates of any product. Select the right companion products. IPM uses a variety of control options, including biological, chemical, and cultural practices. Hazimax is botanical with growth regulator effect on insects and mites. Companion products include pyrethroids, spinosins, microbial toxins, and chloronicotinols that complement azadiractin. Formulations of bifenthrin, spinosad, abamectins, and imidacloprid are effective for different pests. Imidacloprid, of course, being a neonicotinoid. Select the pro product that has been proven to provide adequate performance for the pests you are trying to control. Physical compatibility. Do not use Azimax with Captain. Bordeaux mixture. Triphenylin. Heneltin hydroxide, lime sulfur, Raplex iron, or other highly alkaline materials as they can cause phytotoxicity and or reduced efficacy on some target pests. 
phytotoxicity will occur if tank mix combinations with compounds known to be incompatible with oil-based formulations are used. Application equipment. Apply Azimax with hand-operated manual or power spray equipment suitable for low volume and or high volume applications. Follow the recommendations of the equipment manufacturer when using backpack sprayers, hose end sprayers, compression pump up sprayers, and other sprayers suitable for foliar applications of insecticides. Application schedule. This is a big one. For the most effective control, apply the product when pests are expected to appear or as soon as possible after pests appear and are in Im immature stages. I will repeat, this is most effective against pests as soon as possible and in their immature stages. Because remember, the key thing about azadiractin is that it interferes with uh, the juvenile hormone and ectazone, which are important for metamorphosis. So this is supposed to stop them from becoming adults. If they become adults, this compound is going to be way less effective. So you want to use this with something that kills adults at the same time. They did mention a couple of pretty strong um, insecticides uh, earlier. So spray at an interval of, ten, of 7 to 10 days or as the situation warrants. Make sure to be responsible by your intervals, of course. During high pest infestation levels or when canopy is dense, use higher dosage, use rates, and increase the spray frequency. Spraying in the morning or evening hours is recommended. I assume that's so that the sun doesn't burn your plants or that light doesn't, depending on how you're growing your plants. Uh, repeat spraying if rain occurs within two to three hours of spraying because of um, obviously because they'll wash it off. For additional guidance, consult with your state agricultural experiment station or local extension horticulturalist arborist for information on tactics and windows of application. Foliar application rates for ornamentals and landscape plantings. Use, uh, use I should say, um, trees, shrubs, flowers, conifers, evergreens, herbaceous ornamentals, foliage plants, container, grown ornamentals, plants and ground covers, um, spray concentration. Uh, for a lower rate, we want ranges of 0.25 to 0.75% uh, volume to volume. For medium rate, ranges of 0.75 to 1.25% volume to volume. And for upper rate ranges, uh, you want 1.25 to 1.70% volume to volume. Um, of, and that would be, of course, amounts of Azimax to fluid ounces per gallon. So again, for a lower rate range, 0.32 to 1 fluid ounce, uh, 1 to 1.6 fluid ounces, and uh, for the high or the upper rate ranges, 1.6 to 2.18 fluid ounces. They've done the math for you, which is really helpful. Not everyone does that. Drench application for interior escapes and for plants grown in containers. Use Azimax as a soil drench for effective control of soil-borne insect larvae, including soil-borne larvae of foliar pests such as fungus gnats, nematodes, or soil-borne thrips. When applying as a drench, avoid excessive leaching. Good advice. Uh, uses for, well, no, let me go back here. Um, preventative applications as a soil drench may be warranted for certain pests. That is true. Soil drench applications of azadiractin will have a slower rate of activity because of soil absorption when compared to foliar applications of Azimax. Target the initial application of a soil drench treatment to coincide with the early stages of young larvae and young nymphs. Important, of course. Some larvae, they live in the rhizosphere or they drop down to the uh, soil to pupate Thrips are a good example. There are several thrips who do this. Obviously, if they have already pupated, this may not be as efficacious, and it is, of course, slower as a, as a soil drench. Dilute Azimax with water for concentrations of 0.4 to 0.8% volume to volume. Drench the soil in the pot with one pint of finished spray per one gallon of soil. For fungus gnats, use point. 4% spray concentration for mushroom fly maggot control. 
use the 0.6% volume to volume spray concentration for leaf miners and other difficult to control pests. Ask me how I know that. Use the 0.8% volume to volume spray concentration. Two to three applications should be scheduled at 10 to 14 day intervals until the pest pressure has ended. I think that they recommend this for a lot of reasons. The, um, I'm not sure if resistance is as big of an issue with azadiractin, but it should always be um, something somebody considers, especially if you're tank mixing with something that can and has been shown to be um, uh, resistant or, or to have pests that are resistant to it. Dilution table for drench applications. We have here um, for 1, 5, and 10 gallons. Uh, they have a, a nice graph, I'm not going to get into it, but the application interval for all of them is 10 to 14 days, and the number of applications is 2 to 3. And I think that's a, that's a pretty good um, standard. That's, a, that's pretty standard for a lot of pesticides. Uh, not the amount necessarily, but the um, interval. Uh, two weeks is pretty standard. Azimax can also be applied through subsurface treatment equipment. Always follow manufacturer's use directions. Okay. Uh, we have a section, number two, uses for garden crops, vegetables, herbs, and spices, fruits, and berries. Um, I'll go over the instructions here. For the most effective control, spray the product as soon as possible after pests appear and are in immature stages. Already said that. Spray at an interval of 7 to 10 days, or as the situation warrants. Spraying in the morning or evening hours are recommended. Repeat spraying if rain occurs. We've already gone over that. Um, apply Azimax as directed to any food or non-food crop up to and including the day of harvest at a maximum rate of 1.33 fluid ounces per 1,000 square feet per application. Apply Azimax alone to food garden crops on the day of harvest. Dilute this product with water at 0.5 to 4 tablespoons per gallon. For hose and sprayers, set the rate per gallon at the dial setting of 1 to 4 uh, tablespoons, depending on the crop and pests. Use the lower rate per gallon for low to moderate infestations and use the higher specified rate per gallon for severe infestations. And Only you can be the judge of what is severe and what is moderate. Use rates for garden crops, vegetables, herbs, and spice, spices, berries, and fruits. We have a graph with that title here. I'm really not going to go over all of these. Um, but we have uh, various examples. Read the graph. Another good reason to read the uh, specimen label. Um, maybe even get a print of this. And uh, what I like to suggest to people is to take these graphs and uh, cut and paste them. If you have somebody, you can use any kind of really photo editing software, even paint, and uh, you know, put them together as a nice little. Um, uh, announcement brochure or bulletin that you can post into greenhouses that you can post where you keep your pesticides and that would be a great reference point for you. Uh, same here we have another graph um, it looks like it's just continued they uh, I don't know how else to uh, to articulate this but acid direction works on a lot of pests and uh, for good reason, because um, ectazone and juvenile hormone is conserved amongst uh, all the insects, as far as I understand it. That, met that, that metamorphize in um, the similar way. You know, if they have larvae, and uh, even if they don't have larvae, even if it's um, a different sort of metamorphosis, you can pretty much expect azadiractin to affect them in some way, because the the evolution of metamorphosis is highly conserved. Um, and that's really it. We have storage and disposal and a notice on conditions of sale. I will go over both of those and then we'll be done. Storage and disposal. Do not contaminate water, food, or feed by storage or disposal. Open dumping is prohibited for obvious reasons. Pesticide storage. Store in original containers in a dry, cool, well-ventilated area. If you live in the United States or at the very least California, I know that that is a big no-no. Do not store this in something else. Store it in the original container. 
um, if empty, do not refill or reuse the container. Offer for recycling if available. If party, oh sorry, if partly filled, call your local waste agency for disposal instructions. Never place unused product down any indoor or outdoor drain. Um, please don't do this. This is very bad for the environment. I don't think I really need to go into why, um, but you know, I there are people out there who will do that. That's why that is uh, why that's typed up. Notice on conditions of sale. The directions for use of this product are believed to be adequate and must be followed carefully. However, it is impossible to eliminate all risks associated with the use of this product. Plant injury, ineffectiveness, or other unintended consequences may result because of such factors as weather conditions, presence of other material, um, or the manner of use or application, which I will reiterate is a big factor all of which are beyond the control of Perry America Incorporated. All such risks shall be assumed by the user or buyer. And Azimax is a trademark of Perry America Incorporated. And that's it. That's Azimax, Azadiractin. There it is. If you have any questions, um, please message me. Please leave a comment. If you are curious about um, the signal words like caution, warning, and danger, I have a video on my channel that goes into detail about what those words mean and why they are shorthands for specific um, aspects and attributes of pesticides. Really good to bone up on that knowledge if you don't already know it. And um, yeah, that's really about it. Uh, if you have any suggestions for other labels you would like to see reviewed in this manner, please, by all means, give me a suggestion. In fact, this is a uh, suggestion from somebody um, who suggested to me to do Xeritol uh, and uh, Azimax and Azadiractin and other products. And I've gotten a few other people who have asked about this product, and I've seen a lot of debate about this product in general. So thank you for suggesting it. Please suggest more. Have a good day. Please stay safe.